Okay, so yeah, let's let's uh, jump into it for a bit. Tell us. This is going to be pretty quick. Much quicker than TRS was. Because we already know a lot about TRS now. Since we already know a lot about TRS, there's less to explain about Sheila G. Mm. Essentially. Oh, this is like a build, Because they're actually pretty similar. Itself, they they do build up on themselves. Taking with you. Okay. Professor So I wrote Dave. this and I put this in our... So <laughs> if you're in the club, you have a new Let's product called Recommended Products. It's in there. And uh, so there's the list. And then I'm also adding things. So I just added yesterday, the day before the TRS research and then more on Sheila Jeet and how it works. So we have our cute little videos in there, Sheila Jeet first impressions and then how to make CMOS gel of uh, mostly just blending. It's mostly <laughs> blending. That's that's the secret. It's blending. And lots of water. Lots and lots and lots Way of water. Way more water than what you might intuitively think. Yes. Yes. Well, but then it but you did say add it slowly. So that's what you did. Yeah, very slowly. Okay. So more on Sheila Jeet and how it works. <laughs> So Shilajit is a naturally occurring deposit of fulvic acid and humic acid. I didn't write this here, but two mountain ranges or two continents, whatever, came together. I think India slammed into the thing. This is the whole Pangaea (laughs) continent floating around thing. I don't fucking know. Apparently millions of years ago. I don't know. The creation of the dome. Yes. During the creation of the dome, these two continents came and smashed together. I think India smashed into something, whatever. And um, the Himalayan mountains, right? So however the Himalayan mountains formed... It, it was crushing all of this plant matter. So during that process, all of these plants were breaking down, decomposing, and then all of these, this little pocket of fulvic acid and humic acid started to build. So fulvic acid and humic acid, they show up in um, humus, which when I looked into humus, it's just compost. But compost is like, you know, all the layers, it's like sticks and, and leaves and eggshells and, and it's all the layers. When that breaks down completely, there's this like black gooey stuff called humus, but you can't just eat that. But this you can take in. Shilajit. So shilajit, you can take in. So shilajit is a naturally occurring deposit of fulvic acid and humic acid, which are two pieces of humus. Oh, it's the next line. Fulvic acid and humic acid are found in humus which is completely decomposed compost. There are organic acids that bind to inorganic materials. So this is like the living organic part of soil is humus. And that living organic piece of soil binds to like all of these um, trace minerals in the soil. And then the plants take that in. So the plants take in the fulvic and humic acid that was broken down by like bacteria um, like cutting through minerals and then it binds to it and then the plants take it in. So the plants get all the minerals that they need and then we eat the plants, the animals eat the plants, we eat the animals. Through the food cycle, we get fulvic and humic acid. Gotcha. So that's kind of how this works. There are organic acids that bind to inorganic materials that aren't alive, like rocks, minerals, all the things that we need and trace amounts in our body. They act as a sort of carrier for these minerals to be readily accessible to plants, animals, and us. It's kind of like, this is my metaphor, Mm-hmm. Emily's might be better. She's the metaphor queen. It's kind of like a waiter moving through a crowded party. His tray has a bit of everything on it, and as he moves through the party, everyone takes what they want and needs and swaps out for what they don't want and can't use. So all the used napkins and plates get taken away, and all the food and drink get delivered to exactly who needs them when they need them. Fulvic acid binds to the inorganic materials our body needs to function and then carries them through the intestinal tract all the way into the cell walls. There, it gives the cell what it needs and trades that for something that's not needed. All of this happens through chemical reactions in the body, interacting with and asking for very specific things from the waiter. So ideally, we'd be able to get all of our vitamins and minerals from our diet through the process that I was describing, right? The, the bacteria breaks it down, breaks down all these minerals and breaks down them into their ionic form, mm-hmm. right? into the, their smallest atomic form, and then essentially delivers them to the plant. But pesticides kill that the bacteria in the topsoil so they can't do their job. Mm. It's fucking crazy. I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. And over farming, so there's not as much anyway. Yeah. So ideally, we'd be able to get all of our vitamins and minerals from our diet. But as the soil quality has gone down and the use of pesticides has gone up, there's less and less fulvic acid in our soil and less mm-hmm. nutrients in our food. So that's why like an apple today is way less nutrients than an apple like 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. They're like basically different things. Mm-hmm. Shilajit helps to replace those nutrients that we aren't getting from our soil and also acts as a detoxifier as those minerals are swapped out with heavy metals in the body. So this is the waiter bringing things to our cells and the chemical reactions. Essentially what happens is like, so iron is a carrier for oxygen in the body. 
oxygen just in the body, I think, would like rip through the body is what I was reading. Like it wouldn't be good. But because it's bound in this very specific way, what I'm realizing, and I, I think just from a little bit of research that I've done, is every process in our body is happening with these chemical reactions. Mm -hmm. So there's very specific things in the body that are looking for very specific things, and then they, they bind to them, and then it takes it to where it needs to go. It uses it, and then it's like switched out for something else, and then the, the toxins are, are removed. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Mm -hmm. So what this does, there are over 80 trace minerals in shilajit bound together in fulvic and humic acids. Shilajit acts as a bank for all of these different ions that's then carried through the body to deliver what the cell needs and to take away what they don't. So the, the fulvic acid passes through the intestinal tract and then into the cell wall and the, the chemical reactions that need to happen happen because it has everything that it needs essentially on demand. So mm -hmm. it's like being at a crowded party, party, like a really good party and everything that you would want and need is there. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I'll take one of these little shrimp thingies and, and this drink and whatever. And then they're like, great. Do you have any, you know, and then you're like, oh, but my hands are full with the last little plates and stuff. Mm -hmm. So here, take these. So you're swapping out there. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically, that's basically all I wrote for this. So she legit acts as a bank for all the many different ions that's then carried through the body to deliver what the cell needs and to take away what they don't. So all these chemical reactions are switching things out. Mm -hmm. The waiter is Sheila G who carries out a big tray full of trace minerals, mm -hmm. then comes through and then the tray at the end is full with a bunch of crap that the body didn't want. And then that's kind of carried through. So now I'm seeing TRS in this party example as the bus boy. <laughs> so the bus boy comes around <laughs> and has an empty tray Mm -hmm. So Sheila G is the full tray mm -hmm. and TRS is the empty tray. It's the bus boy on the waiter. Mm -hmm. So the waiter brings out everything that it needs and TRS comes through and it cleans up everything else. So mm -hmm. it's an open tray and it's cleaning out everything that, that it doesn't need. So they act in, they act in very specific ways through very specific chemical reactions. But the thing that is special about Sheila G is that it's this, it's this condensed over a very long period of time. All of this plant matters condensed down and then it's actually similar to, oil from what I understand, similar mm -hmm. process, but it's condensing down just all of this plant matter into a form that can be taken into our bodies mm -hmm. because they're the, they're these folic and humic acid bonds. So it's specifically deposits of folic and humic acid, which are these, these, um, molecules. I don't know. They're, they're in this humus. So it's this organic matter and it binds to all of these trace minerals mm -hmm. and the waiter might actually carry in at the beginning from what I understand the Sheila G the waiter may carry in things that people don't want. There may be some napkins and, and plates on it already, but he has everything. Mm -hmm. So he's moving through the body with everything. The body's taking what it needs and then depositing what it doesn't want. And at the end, it's just full of all the stuff that the body doesn't want and can't use. Wow. TRS is coming through. And TRS, just like a busboy, can't take your plate off of the thing because you'd be like, hey, I'm still eating this. Mm -hmm. The body does the same thing. The body's like, hey, I'm already using this. So TRS is coming through and it's already bound to a chemical process in the body, the oxygen's already bound to the iron, you know, like all of these things are already being used. So TRS mm -hmm. doesn't come and just take it away because it couldn't if it wanted to, it's already mm -hmm. bound to something. So you have the waiter bringing in things that the body needs and the TRS coming through as a busboy to kind of clean up anything residual. Wow. It's a great Super visual. Cool. Yeah. 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 That's really helpful. Yeah. Cool. So I feel really good about them happening together. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm still uh, not a hundred percent sure on whether they should be taken immediately together, but I can't see any problems with it. Mm -hmm. I can't see any big problems with it. Um, but on the TRS website, it says like you can space out, um, like vitamins and minerals, like four hours or something, or, you know, so, mm -hmm. so I think you could do like Sheila in the morning and then TRS midday and then TRS at night. TRS mm -hmm. lasts for six hours. So it's kind of like you're working with windows in the body. So you can mm -hmm. go TRS, Sheila Jeet midday and then TRS at night. You know, you can kind mm -hmm. of play with it. Um, but I don't really see any problem with them even coming in at the same time. Although spaced out would probably be a little bit more effective. Cool. So that's, uh, that's what I'm seeing. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. Was what was super... Emily's example? She had one for Sheila Jeet too? Yeah. Are you allowed to say it or? Um. I don't want to butcher it. She can type it if she wants. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Well, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty quick. Um, but I'm just trying to research all this stuff because intuitively it all feels really good. Mm -hmm. It's like we're going to be doing this anyway. Yeah. But I want to understand how it all works. Mm -hmm. And then it's easier to describe it too. You know? yeah. And then it's like, oh my God, that's what it's doing. That's why I was intuitively called to this mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah. You know, that's 
oh, like we don't get these folic and human acids in our soil. That's why like 10,000 years ago, we weren't supplementing this stuff. Right, right. Although Sheila Jeet's from like Ayurvedic traditions and like it goes back like 3,000, 5,000 years, there's documented Mm -hmm. like people are using this. And what's actually cool, so I didn't write this, but do you remember with TRS how we were talking about the synthetic version versus the the non-synthetic version? My understanding of, of this is like, so with TRS, we were maximizing purity for, um, quantity. Yes. Well, we're maximizing purity and then kind of losing out on some of the quantity because of the price. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're maximizing purity by making in the lab with this, this is a naturally occurring thing. So it's kind of weird, but they're, they're slightly different processes. Mm -hmm. So like for the bus boy, you want him to have as empty of a tray as possible Mm -hmm. because he's, he's literally there to clean up. Yep. But for this, like, it's literally about the delivery of all of these things. Like, mm-hmm. you, like, our cells are hungry for the the folic and humic acid and all of the trace minerals that are bound to it. Our yep. souls, our our souls, <laughs> our cells need these electrolytes. So, all of these electrolytes are being carried through this. And I think there's other amino acids. There's something called carbon sixty, which I don't know too much about. Um, the synthetic. Versus yeah, so with with Shilaji, what I'm realizing is that there are other folic and humic acid um, compounds that you can take. But for me, the from wh- the way I'm reading this, the whole point of it is for the folic and humic acid to already be bound to something. Mm-hmm. So it helps with the absorption of things and brings them through the intestinal tract and into the bloodstream and all of that. So it's it's almost weird to me to take folic and humic acid outside of that. Mm. Like it's, it's this really natural source of this, but it already has all of the trace minerals in it that you would want the waiter to carry out through the party. You know, it's Mm. weird to have a waiter and like, all right, go, go carry things out. And it's like, well, I hope there's food here. You know, it's like you would want Mm. the waiter to already have all of the food on the tray when he's carrying these things in, not just to get into the body and it's like, well, is there anything for me to carry here? Like, like hope that there's other plates of food just laying out on the, on the tables that you can deliver to people. Um, but hmm. specifically with the synthetic thing, the folic and humic acid supplements, they're extracted from these from plants. That's the only way to get it. Mm. You cannot make folic acid in a lab. They don't even know what it is. Oh, That's wow. what's crazy is they don't know what it is. They, they don't know the chemical structure of it. It is a huge mystery in science. <laughs> it's like untraceable. Like they, they don't know what it is because every time they look at it, it's different. And you send a folic acid, like you send a um, sample to a lab, to three different labs, they'll all send you back with different results. Nobody knows what this stuff is. Other than that, it's a piece of humus, with it, which it breaks down. It's, it's a piece of life. It's a fundamental wow. building block of life and of our food chain, but we don't know how to synthetically create it. So there is no synthetic creation of fulvic acid in a lab that's the exact same as the chemical, right? With, like with TRS, mm-hmm. the clinoptolites, you can make this in a lab and it's just a clean version. There's no making a clean version of fulvic acid. They, they're extracting it from plants through chemical processes. So what about the people that are taking powdered fulvic acid and powder, powdered humic Powdered fulvic acid and humic acid, they're, they're extracted from plants through chemical processes. Mm. It's the only way to get it out. You have to extract it. You have to, you have to take it out. Certain acid washes and chemical washes, and like you have to like you have to break down the matter. I my my sense was it's not as a cleaned of a process. So one of the articles that I was reading on this website said that shilajit was the only natural occurring deposit of folic acid and humic acid like this, hmm. which I'm not 100 percent sure on because it's also in plants and you know other things. Yeah. But I think just for the supplementation of it, it's the only natural form of of fulvic and humic acid um, everything else is synthetically it's 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 pulled from all the plants and animals and you cannot generate this stuff cleanly in a lab wow wow yeah cool so cool yay stuff. intuition for the win yeah i know i love it <laughs> so let's see oh funny okay uh she said ha my metaphor wasn't educationally inclined but that but was that Sheila Jeet dosing spoon is like how soul works in teeny tiny bits at a time, but very powerful. Yeah, I love that. I know. I like mm-hmm. that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she got the spoon. I might have thrown the spoon away or we didn't get one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But they do come with spoons. So you'll see us using like a janky, just a like it's a measuring. Not it's not janky, but it's huge <laughs> in comparison to the actual spoon. So it's, we've it's been taking a bunch of a 16. We're not overdosing. <laughs> through your research right that is that is what i learned yeah i mean you can have this stuff running through your system and it's 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 only going to change out what it needs and wants 
But for some reason, and I do want to look deeper into this, what it says is to cycle on and off. So it says to take it for about a month or so and then to cycle off for four months, which I don't entirely understand why. I don't, I don't completely get that because I think it'd just be running through the system, but it said something with like the immune system and like the response to it. Like there's, there's, there's something about it where they want you to cycle on and off. Um, and there's also warnings about alcohol and, uh, pharmaceuticals. So if you're, if you're drinking, which I mean, I don't know if any of us drink, we've been drinking a long time, but if you're drinking or taking pharmaceuticals, it can also help to pass that quicker through the system. So there is elements of that where it's like fulvic acid. It's actually crazy watching these guys do it. So they'll they'll take pure fulvic acid drops, which again, it's pulled from the thing, but it does it does similar things. You take fulvic acid drops and you drop it in water and then you squeeze something else into it and it permeates almost immediately. So you do fulvic acid drops in like in water and then put in a tea bag and the whole thing just fills with tea. Like Whoa. like that. It is so crazy. And it's so it's helping because it's binding to all mm-hmm. of the all of the other minerals. It's binding everything else, and then it helps distribute it through really, really quickly. Mm-hmm. So a similar thing's happening in the body, where it's it's helping to pass through some of these vitamins and minerals into the body. And what I didn't realize was that there are often chunks of of these minerals in these supplements that we're taking. Like there are there are chunks of minerals, but the body has to break them down into the ionic form first. So through the mm-hmm. digestional tract, through the intestinal tract, the body is trying to digest these vitamins and minerals. They're trying to break them down into a form that they can actually use, mm-hmm. which is the smallest atomic form. It's the only way that the chemical reactions in the body can happen. So the body has to change these other minerals first, which takes more energy. And often you're certainly not going to get 100% of it. Mm-hmm. So it is really, it's, it's really like a small dose that has a big bang because when it's bringing this through the body, it's already immediately, when you take it, it's already in the form that the body can process it, mm-hmm. already ready to pass through the intestinal tract and do its magic through the cell walls and then get swapped out for all the things that the body isn't wanting, doesn't, ne- doesn't use, doesn't need, and then that gets carried through. Wow. Cool. cool stuff. That's cool stuff. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And wow. I think it's the same with both of these. I don't, I don't know much about our organs, how our organs work, but I think both Sheila Jeet and, um, and TRS, they then get passed through the kidneys and then, and then out. out. Yeah. And then out through our pee. I think that's, I think mm-hmm. that's how it works. And sweat mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't entirely know about that, but it, it passes it through and it, it puts them in this inert form. So they're trapped in this cage. They're not wreaking havoc on our body. And then they just get, they get carried through like anything else. Sweet. So that's it. That's Sheila Jeet. 